obviously a game plan and all that stuff. You know, you focus on that. But the regular season um, has gotten us prepared, you know, for this time. So it's about just resting on what we learned throughout the year, um, resting on who you are as a player and just playing free mentally. And I think that's what all the best teams do around this time is, you know, lean on what you've been working on all season. So um, we're looking forward to this opportunity and, it was the first step until us getting in the playoffs, so we got to take care of business. This is a twofold from a, I guess a, a smaller sense. I mean, have you noted that teams have doubled you more, Steve, and that the teams are doubling me more willing to double? Have you noted that this year? Have you got more of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've noticed. I mean, it's, it's, I feel like it's a difference between like a you know, shadowing somebody or just being in the area of someone and full out doubling and just straight out selling out to stop somebody. And I feel like I got, I feel like I, I've been playing amongst those three things throughout the whole season. And each coach is going to throw something different at me each game. You know, sometimes I come down court and I see the whole team just staring in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, that's a tough position to be in, you know? So, um, you know, I just got to make the right reads. I turned the ball over. I had some wild turnovers this year, but for the most part, I thought I did a good job of finding guys and, you know, playing the game a little slower and seeing things uh, develop before they actually do. And, you know, so I think it was good for me to get that type of coverage early in the season, which is going to prepare me for what's about to happen. And from a team perspective, obviously you guys have had kind of a crazy season, guys, in and out of the lineup, big trades. But for you guys to finish the season the way you have and to finally have some clarity on where you are in the standings, who you're playing, when, just how good does that feel? Yeah, it feels great. I mean, it was an up and down last two two seasons for us. Um, um, it just felt better last year because we were a one seed going into the playoffs, but um, and we were just playing better, you know, as a group. Um, but we still had to deal with a lot of injuries and just an up and down year, COVID. So in this year, it was just trades, injuries, you know, but that's just the NBA. And I like how we all persevered through from the guys on the floor to front office, just everybody around our organization just, you know, stuck together through the tough times. And now we're here. It's an opportunity to go compete um, for a championship. So, you know, that's where you want to be at around this time of the year. And we know all that stuff is going to build character in this in this organization. So, um in the moment, it sucks going through some of that stuff, but when you look back on it, it definitely has uh, made, a, made us better as a group. You guys, once you get out of college, don't get a chance of playing a lot of one-game tournaments, you know, single elimination type stuff. There were, uh, you know, you've played a billion of these Olympic type games where it's one game. And how do you feel about this? Yeah, game seven is in Olympics. You know, just just go play. I mean. Can't put too much pressure on yourself. You understand how important the game is already. So the best thing to do is just play free and stick to the game plan and trust in your teammates. And I think that's uh, usually how you try to approach these games. And we'll see what happens. Kevin, I'm curious. You've proven you have a pretty good memory. I mean, it's rare you miss your first six, seven shots in the game. Do you know the last time that might have happened? No, I don't. This shit feel like last week I did that. Um, yeah, that sucked, man. I, mean, it was, I just had a, the wrong approach to scoring tonight. I just, I just hate how I approached it. But I'm glad I was able to make a few later on. Um, but I don't want to go 0 for 6, 0 for 7 to start any more games. Do you, do you know that you were in your career high range assist-wise, or did someone tell you or something? Oh, yeah, of course I knew. Yeah. Kevin, are you a fan of the playing tournament? I mean, I really, I, I really didn't have any thoughts about it to be honest. I mean, it is what it is. Um, gives that extra two teams, am I right? Two teams opportunity to try to compete for the for the, for the spot. It's cool. I mean, fans like it. You know, no complaints from me. You think it's Kyrie was just saying somebody in the league office is sitting there looking at last year with Steph and LeBron. Now you guys in it. And somebody's saying, yes, this works. Do you think it's good for the game? Uh, the product on the court is, it depends on how the games are, you know. Um, the format of the playoffs and all that stuff don't really matter. It's about the product on the court and the players on the floor. 
Um, and I'm, and I'm sure it'd be some good basketball out there with the talent we have in this league. Kevin Kyrie said that he called you PG from PG uh, <laughs> today, and I'm just wondering if the defenses that you faced this season, if if you would say that they made you a better playmaker this year. Since 2012, I've been around five assists a night. Um, so this is not, it's been 10 years of this, I feel. So I feel like I've been an elite passer since then. 2013, 2013. So yeah, I mean, some people might start recognizing now because I got more popular and more people know me, but <laughs> just like last game, a few of my friends like, yo, you start shooting one leg shots. I'm like, where the fuck, where y'all been? You know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel about my passing too. A lot of people just either focus just on my scoring or haven't really focused on me in, at all as a player. So um, I expect to come out there and make the right reads and give my teammates good looks. So it's nothing new to me. Yeah, I was always, I mean, I was, I had a growth spurt. So, you know, I was two guard, point guard, dribble the ball when I was like ninth, eighth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade. So once I got to 10th grade, I grew to about six, eight, you know, so six, seven. And um, I guess that stuff stayed with me. But also just being from PG County, Washington, D.C. area, like everybody just walks around with a basketball all the time. Like it's just in us. So, pause. So, yeah. Just one more since you brought up the uh, one leg jumper because I've been meaning to ask about that and your perspective on improvisation on a basketball court because some feel like, oh, we pulled this out and we haven't seen it before, but just behind the scenes, how much work goes into things that people look at. Always just improvising out there on the court. Yeah, repetition is the father of learning. I feel like just do stuff over and over again simply. Just, you know, what you do the most is what you're going to be best at. You know, so if I want to be good at something, I just try to do it over and over again until I feel like I got it right, you know, and that's how I feel on my jump shot and fall away jump shot, you know, different types of shots that I try to perfect, you know, I just do it over and over again. I mean, you never know. It's just, I never know. <laughs> it's just a feel thing, you know, and try not to predetermine or, Tele telegraph anything out there, um, you know, it just happens. So, so many times where I try to force it, <laughs> uh, you know, but just as long as I got it in the toolbox, I feel cool.